But I thought before I uh, kick off, um, and these are Frank's slides, um, I just thought I'd give some context briefly to say how did Goldsmiths and the ESRC get involved in this project in the first place. Um, and that is, the ESRC are very keen to ensure that knowledge is shared between universities um, and various industries. In other words, to try and break the silos where you get the effect of lots of research going on in universities, but not getting out into industry. And in particular, innovation um, is a key area um, which academically we need to get into, in the UK in particular. Um, there are a number of innovation projects going on. And so broadcast media, media in general, are seen as hubs of innovation. And so we approached the BBC when the project came along and asked, is there something uh, that we could do around innovation to try and help the quality of multi-platform innovation? Now, if you understand the nature of academia, academia is about producing things, well, at least psychology, science, it's, it's all academia, is about reducing processes into, into smaller blocks so that you can measure things. Now, there's a natural tension between trying to measure what a producer does and a creative process and to say, how can we make this measurable in such a way so that we can get a predictable outcome at the end of a, at the end of a process? By definition, if the outcome is predictable, um, then it isn't creative in that sense. And so the real mission of what we came in to do, and I think it's been quite well covered um, by everybody who's been uh, speaking earlier, is to say, well, even if we're not going to try and create creativity in that sense, what we are going to try and do is to determine what kinds of interventions lead to more innovative multi-platform output. And we've heard today um, about how we created two groups, a control group um, and an experimental group, or the trainee group. One group who had certain interventions and another group who didn't. And then to compare at the end of the period, as we explained there with the lab day, um, to see was there a significant difference between the innovative output of the trainee group compared to the control group. And there were indeed significant differences. So I guess this is a bit of a plug for why Goldsmiths and the ESRC are involved, is that I think there is room in any industry to say, can we bring measurement and some science into this without threatening to take away the creativity of the whole thing, but to add something to the creative process. And so with that kind of little introduction, I'm going to take you through, a lot of this has already been spoken about, but the, the two main things I think that came out um, <coughs> as useful findings, the first one is this idea of goal setting, which I think everybody has spoken about. Mike put it um, very well. Um, We've, we, have, we know in psychology, and in organizational psychology in particular, that setting goals is crucial to something working. Um, right from the very top level, where we have trying to bring dead horses to troughs to make them drink, you need the cultural buy-in of an objective. Now, objective setting has one advantage. You're not telling somebody to do something specific in a multi-platform context. What you're saying is set a broad objective for what you do. As soon as you give people the real detail at that point, you've lost it. And I think the goal setting, um, we thought that it would be effective. We had no idea how effective it was actually going to be. If, if there was one key takeaway in this, it is that set goals if you want to get good multi-platform output. Now, that ties in with the research, which says that specific goals lead to higher performance, you need to get feedback on those goals. So, goal setting here, and I'm going through Frank's notes, um, can be used to achieve a variety of objectives. They direct attention, so we had that concept that people were talking about of getting people's attention. It's a vehicle for getting people's attention onto what you're trying to do. It's probably not the only vehicle, but it has a particular advantage that goals are something that you can sort of cascade down an organization. So if you get buy-in from the senior execs who have a goal, those can be broken up as they go down the organization. As has been pointed out by a number of people at the BBC as well, goals can be cascaded back up so that you can start getting broken goals going both ways. So that was one reason we think that the goal setting workshops were um, and the objective setting workshops were so powerful. 
They regulate the effort, so there's a way of monitoring it. And as everybody here who's from a creative media, regulating creative people is never a fun thing to do, and it kind of does take away from it. But nonetheless, if you've got an output at the end of the day, you really do need to have some kind of control to monitor the quality of that. So there's always going to be an element of regulation, and the workshops were useful. They help with the persistence, because people have got an approach goal. So in terms of psychology, you've got approach and avoidance. Um, you've got people moving towards something, rather than the stick approach saying, if you don't do the multi-platform, you're going to be in trouble. So it gives people something to work towards, something positive. And finally, it fosters deeper thinking, strategic thinking. And once you've got the objective, you start breaking it down into smaller components, that's where you get your action plans from. So, we've heard about goals being smart. I'm not gonna go into um, detail on this. I think we all have an idea of what it is. Just because we have an idea of what it is, doesn't mean that we all do it. Um, is there anybody who hasn't come across smart goals in this room? Do I need to go through what that's about? Probably not. Okay, then the goal setting training itself. So we have the series producers, um, traditionally mostly from linear backgrounds, is that correct? I think mostly from linear backgrounds, giving them some theory on the power of goal setting, in other words, an expanded version of what I uh, went through there, giving them a tool, which we'll have a look at in a second, um, about how to bring goal setting into multi-platform contexts. So the idea of the tool, is that we can look at audience experiences, which I think was ably shown in the video we've looked at. You can have a look at the level of innovation. Always a tricky thing. How do you measure innovation? If you thought measuring creativity was hard, try putting a measure um, on innovation. It gives you an idea of a time frame, because once you've got an objective, you can say this objective needs to be achieved by two weeks, three weeks, or in time for Holby next, four, next week at 4 p.m or the collaboration that the idea would benefit from. In other words, here's the objective. We can't do this on our own as a linear department or as an MP department. Who do we need to collaborate with in the organization or outside of the organization to achieve that goal? So here, I don't know whether you can read this in any way, but this is the goal setting template that um, was developed. I think this was, uh, Hannah, you were quite key in producing this. this is a template which covers a number of areas. And if you can't um, read them here, the, the, the various areas are following a kind of a narrative through. So the first thing you see, start with is, what do you want the audience to do? So it's the idea of audience-driven media. Now, we've had that from Mike, who was saying, dragging certain, like, like, like Sky News, for example, dragging people through. If you get the push effect of people saying, here is the content that people should see, you can get technically great multi-platform uh, media, you can get great anything, but ultimately, unless you're feeding into the audiences, as we saw with the focus groups earlier, you're not going to get the kind of thing. So the very first thing which strikes you here is that what are the kinds of things you're looking for that, would, that your audience might benefit from? Then you might ask about what is the scale of the ambition? How much impact do we want to make? Is this the largest part of the production? Or is the linear going to be? What is our ambition? What is our objective? Do we want to engage people? Do we want to inform people? Um, do we want to tease them on to the next uh, component that's coming through? What are the time scales? So now we're getting down to the part which speaks about the objective to say how long have we got to do this? If you've got a large ambition, then you need to make sure that your time scales are aligned and that you've got um, your priorities in there. Um, and then finally the collaboration priority. So here you have an example of a goal setting workshop where somebody might set the goals in that you've got these things on a scale. So if you talk about what is the audience idea there, um, who you're going to focus on and what you want them to do. So here we have, for example, uh, options, get an alert, share pictures, discover your show in a new way, um, find out about themselves, and you can see the idea of the narrative, it needs to tell a story, um, is discover your show, change the pace, change the show itself, <coughs> then the objective is to find out more, how we're going to do that, from seeing it from another perspective, see the show anytime, anywhere, and we're going to do that via a game, for example. 
The goal sheet also says the number of ideas that you want to put them in, and there's some narrative. I think the point of this is that the format is good, and I think we've got ticking a number of headings, but I think there's an opportunity for you to make it specific to your own organization, your own media, and to what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. So I think you could look at these as a starter set of headings, um, and perhaps to develop something that is particularly applicable to your context. Now, if we have a look at what did um, participants say, you can have a read. So you get the idea that there has been objective setting of some kind. What this is doing is what we started out by saying, the role of academia, uh, academia is to try and formalize it slightly without giving the feeling that you're imposing a creative process or imposing on the creative process. Now, the next component that was important um, from a psychological point of view is the idea of providing mentors. So the idea, as we've heard of mentors, are to help the producers um, to gain experience from more, exper uh, from more experienced producers. So it's a kind of a journey, uh, a journey, an apprenticeship where you have somebody helping you. It's a traditional um, system, grandparenting system. So you've had the training, which we heard about. Now you need to apply it. So there's the two, there's the theory and there's the practice. And the idea of the mentors were to help people who've gone through training apply what they've learned in the actual, in the job itself. The experiences on these are, are more mixed. Um, and if you look at the comments, you start getting the idea that mentoring really needs to be structured in order for it to work optimally. I don't think at the stage we did it, we realized how much mentoring, or how much structure was required. Um, and I think these comments have been taken on board. Um, and the idea is you need to have the structure you need the specific goals, so we probably had that ticked. Um, the mentor's role needs to be specified. In other words, you can't have a mentor in there um, saying, look, I'm here to help you. What do you want help with? Um, there need to be that whole idea of cascading objectives down. There need to be objectives even for the mentoring if you're going to offer somebody a mentor. Anybody that's been through a coaching process will probably appreciate that most coaching models will insist that there's some kind of objective for the coaching, objective for the session, there may be something in that if you're using mentors or buddies or coaches to help multi-platform people is think about are there ways that you can create goals for specific sessions and for the whole mentoring uh, process. So finally we come down to the, the, the thorny question of what is an innovative multi-platform goal? Because if you ask 10 producers or 10 creatives you're going to get 11 answers. And the innovative goal is that when we came into the project, and I'm not sure how much this has changed, is there were no real usable definitions. Yet, there's a sense, and I think, I don't know whether you agree, that if you ask people who are in the industry, there, there's often consensus on whether something is innovative or not. People, you know, not everybody's going to agree, but if you ask 10 people, you'll generally get 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10, saying yes, that is um, innovative. And so our goal was to try and use experts' thinking in judging it. Instead of trying to create an objective academic scale of can we tick boxes and give this thing an innovation score out of 10, we used, we took advantage of experts' subjective ratings and asked a team of experts, a panel of experts, to do the rating on that final lab day um, which measured that. And so the criteria that the experts use, because you still need to have a framework, is that there needs to be the idea and you can read the criteria, it's about the quality of the multi-platform idea. In other words, the loosest concept of the spark, the light itself, what is the concept? Then there is the production component of innovation. Is, is it using existing platforms or templates in a novel way? In other words, it's not always about radical innovation, it can be about incremental innovation. In fact, I think Sky, exactly the point Mike was making earlier, is the idea of incremental innovation that you don't want to be always be looking at next, next. You just sometimes want to be looking at next because there's a lot of risk um, tied to that and there are big ideas um, around the idea of a public broadcaster, for example. Is it their role to do next, next? 
to make to pave the way for other people. Um, so there, there are a number of interesting discussions for public versus um, private broadcasting, perhaps other productions. So in conclusion, uh, the, fi the main findings are that the goal setting and discussing the innovation criteria were very critical um, to the success of the project, and we would recommend that in organisations um, that you use them to guide not only your producers, but also the commissioners um, and people who are coming up with the initial ideas to produce, in general, more multi-platform content. Thank you very much indeed.